Uh, where do I start from? <laughs> so to our ambassador, with all the kind words and everything, let me say, uh, maybe Rwanda got the leadership Rwanda deserved. And I'm saying this to remind all of us that um, nothing works just because of one person, one leader, but uh, things work because of the collective effort. So for Rwanda to deserve, uh, as I said, the leadership uh, they got, it's indeed because Rwanda, uh, and Rwandans together have done things uh, that um, therefore they deserve to be moving in the right direction. So thank you. Now, I'm here. I've been here for the last couple of days um, for a number of reasons. The first was the invitation I received to come and uh, join and be part of prayer breakfast. And I thank uh, Grace, whom I see here in front of me in this room. Thank you for doing that. So, I came. We prayed. We had breakfast. Everything went according to plan. I'm grateful. But coming here for prayer breakfast gave me a number of opportunities. One was to meet uh, many other people here in the United States, uh, public and private people who serve in those capacities. I also met, well, this time I'm meeting Rwandans from across the world, I should say. <laughs> Meeting Rwandans in this sense, Rwanda Day is not just another addition to the program I had. It's a very important part of why I had to come here even to answer the invitation I received for prayer breakfast. Because I normally, even for just Rwanda Day on its own, I have traveled places to meet and address a gathering like this. So all those were very important uh, tasks for me to cut out while I was here. The other part is um, equally important. I want to take this moment to thank 
Let me start with Ruan and Zhu have come from all over the world and are here with us and we are going to have a good conversation. But I want to thank the friends of Rwanda who have not, uh, who are no longer just friends. They have become uh, Rwandans, they've become uh, family, if I will say. There are those who uh, have just spoken to us. Senator Enhoff, uh, Pastor Rick, and there are many others uh, sitting here in this audience that I have seen and can see now and others. Um, they've become, for the last 30 years, some of them in actual fact, part of who we have become and who we are. So I wanted to thank you. I won't take the risk of uh, naming them. I don't want to leave anyone out of the list that I would wish to spare out. They are here. Anyway, that's the most important thing. And I can see them. And they can thank them when they are here. So there are things that uh, happened during this time I've been here. There are things that didn't happen. You know, some people sometimes want to highlight what didn't happen. But I want to highlight what happened that was very important for me and for Rwanda. Our journey has been uh, quite long and uh, trying, uh, difficult, but that's the beauty of it, uh, that we are where we are through those, those difficulties. We have endured, we have survived, we want to do just as much to be better human beings, to be where we want to be. Some people in other parts of the world have taken for granted we will be there, no matter what. This is what we said from the beginning. Thirty years ago, now we're covering thirty years since uh, the worst tragedy in our country. but we believed. We wanted to live our lives, even so many lost theirs. And we promised ourselves. You know, uh, there is this, I think people say, that uh, lightning does not strike twice in the same place. 
doesn't strike same place twice. Maybe. But for me, I want to be on the safe side. I would rather make sure and prepare for a situation where Rwanda that was struck once badly in 94 will not be struck again. I want us Rwandans not to take chances. We just have to ensure that we are not going to be struck again. And um, that is possible. We just have to prepare our defenses, build our capacity. You know, with the, with the lightning, which I was giving uh, uh, the example of, there is uh, something, maybe in some languages they call it something else, or even in the same language, English, but I know it as a lightning conductor. You put it on a house, and when uh, the lightning strikes, everything goes down to the earth and leaves the building uh, and the people and things intact in the house if it was a house. So we have to make sure that we put in place this uh, protective mechanism. And that's going to be by everyone of us being prepared and working together to ensure that uh, that does not happen again. Earlier, the young lady mentioned something, and I quickly, to my mind, I knew where the story came from. Uh, somebody must have uh, let out our conversation, which was a bit... Uh, private, and I know it must have come from Maasai, who I'm seeing in the crowd. Uh, what he didn't tell you was that, uh, apart from scratching my head, I was busy turning my pockets and <laughs> wondering where the money is going to come from. Uh, but nonetheless, I... I even then, I was convinced all that is possible. It is possible, it's going to be possible in many other cases because of uh, what I said earlier, just working hard, preparing ourselves, learning lessons from our past and history, building on that, moving ahead into our future, which must be better than our past.
And you know, human beings are capable of many things, uh, some of them as bad as what happened 30 years ago in our country. But human beings also have the capacity to do good things. Like Rwandans have repaired what was destroyed, including our lives, and we are much better now than we were 30 years ago. We just have to keep going. I was going to say, don't relax, but I want you to relax. <laughs> Only that you remember that uh, while you relax, you also, parallel to that, you need to be doing the right things, the right way, and the right speed. All right? Um, I've also heard people say, if you want to go fast, you go alone. If you want to go and reach far, you have to go together. You know, I want us to go together, but I want us to go fast and reach far, both of them. I don't think there is any contradiction. You can go far and fast at the same time. That's what our situation compels us to do. And we must, must think like that. We must be able to do things and move fast but we want to go far at the same time. And we really have ourselves either to blame or, or to thank for succeeding. Nobody else. Don't, don't blame. If one has failed, don't start looking for excuses and say, you know, somebody somewhere, and then you start talking about the colonial times, you start talking about, no, no, no. Those are over, behind us. So, so don't, don't uh, let, let's not use an excuse. Uh, uh, we, we, we must, uh, though of course in, uh, in our region and we see on our continent, we still have a lot of problems to overcome, but they can be overcome. There's no question about it. Um, and we need to keep uh, trying to work together. Best what we are doing on facts, on truth, on evidence. And the measure. What we are doing, where we have come from, and where we have reached. And then you try to investigate to find what is it that uh, delayed us, what is it that failed us, and, and you fix it, and we have to fix that. We are capable um, and please, as Rwandans, we can't afford to waste the lessons learned from our tragedy. There are so many lessons, including that sometimes in time of need, you are on your own. So you prepare for when that time comes. If you were 
to be left on your own, you can still do something and survive and live and make progress. But that does not preclude working together with others and learning from them and benefit from what they offer. So these are things we saw for Rwandans who came from uh, different places and uh, friends of Rwanda whom I mentioned too. The reasons for Rwanda Day um, to start with is to make sure that every Rwanda who is outside of Rwanda is connected with his or her home wherever they are. You can leave Rwanda and go wherever you want to go, but Rwanda should not leave you. It stays with you. So maybe if you stayed with it in some form, it's good for all of us. It's good for Rwanda, it's good for you and it is doable. That's why uh, whenever I have an opportunity, we have this Rwanda Day. We have had so many here in the United States. We have had uh, more than a dozen of them. We have had them in Canada, in Europe, in in Africa itself, in Asia, and, but more here in the United States. And uh, we will have more London. So we are here now 30 years after the tragedy. And I know since 94, many of you are about that age, 30 years, plus, minus, but around that. I want to ensure that we understand that our future, your future, is in your hands. The young people of our country want to be able to rely on you, to believe in you, to get a sense that you've been brought up in a manner that is going to be meaningful and uh, to put Rwanda in a place where it deserves to be. It's upon you. Those are choices that you have to make. 
And I don't see why you wouldn't make those good choices that were enabled it to happen as we want it. So those in business, in politics, in philanthropy, in faith organizations and different things, we welcome you. We thank you for many things you're already doing. But uh, we have to be aware there is more to come. It is more expected from all of us. Um, so that's the pleasure of being here and thanking you for what you're already doing and urging you to do more. Asking you to do more isn't like uh, making you feel that what you are doing is a thankless job, but just the reality of uh, our situation and what is expected of us. So, and I said, uh, where do I start from? I'm now struggling to find a way of ending this one. <laughs> but I want to once again thank you. I think we have uh, another part where we're going to have a conversation. And uh, <coughs> I hope we all enjoy that part as well. God bless you.